Mr. Deoxy Driver Show on 102.1 in Living Stereo. And this is why we speak truth to power. And today, Lord get up mercy. And as always, we have so many different things to talk about. You can join me live on Facebook. We are live on Facebook. Yes, and our Facebook page is Xylophone 102.1 FM. We are also live on YouTube. Our YouTube page is Xylophone Media. And of course, we are live also on Xylophone TV. Lord God have mercy. And in all cases, Xylophone is spelled Z-Y-L-O-F-O-N. That is Z-Y-L-O-F-O-N. Hey, today we have so many things to talk about. Now we're going to begin with his eminence... Ah, his sleepiness, Mr. Sleepy Dent, the president of the Republic of Ghana, is out again on his sleeping spree. My brother, my sister, the president is at the 221, that's 2021 UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, Scotland. My brother, my sister, and photographs are all over the place. Videos are all over the place. Catching Mr. Sleepy Dent doing what he does best, sleeping. My brother, my sister, time and again, I have told Ghanaians, it is not a crime for a 77, 78 year old man to be sleeping all the time. In fact, if a 77 year old man it's not caught dozing time after time, then it's probably using some terrible drugs to keep him awake. It's natural. Even a 50-year-old is sometimes caught dozing. And even younger people, my brother, my sister, it is only greed that would make us laugh at a 77, 78-year-old man like the sleepy dent, Nana Kufuado. We should all also blame ourselves, my brother, my sister, for putting our bet on a dead horse. Those of you who do betting, you understand what is meant by a dead horse. My brother, my sister, when we all decide to go to the polling stations and to the ballot boxes and choose a horse that is dead, we should not blame anybody when that horse is not able to complete the race. When that horse falls asleep in the middle of the race. Whilst other horses are racing, it will just be taking a walk in the park, sleeping intermittently. I'm speaking in parables. My brother, my sister, it is no news that the only president in the world right now who sleeps unprovoked and it doesn't matter where, whether it's on the WC, whilst puffing at something that we cannot mention on radio, my brother, my sister, or whilst even taking a walk. I am so excited that the president does not drive, or else one of these days, God forbid, he would be asleep behind the steering wheel. And the next thing will be the next thing. To God be the glory. We don't want that to happen. My brother, my sister, Mr. President will fly in a, a jet that is so exorbitantly high in cost. Mr. President has a very high taste for exquisite jets. He knows where to find the most expensive jets. A jet that has two bathrooms and two showers and two jacuzzis. A jet that shows foreign movies. From Van Damme all the way to Jet Li. And even Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nothing to do with Kumawood. A jet that serves Spanish and Italian delicacies. Nothing to do with ever and Ashanti delicacies like Fufu and Akpla and Petri Dechi. My brother, my sister, Mr. President knows how on earth a self-professed prostitute can be given access into such an exorbitantly prized jet without the knowledge of whoever is supposed to be giving security when selfies and other photographs are taken. It is an indictment on our security and at the same time on the presidency and the whole nation. May I go on? My brother, my sister, 
I do not want to hear any bad news. Especially when it has to come to people's lives taken. That is why it is always important to take your security issues very important. My brother, my sister, in my time as a young man growing up, I have seen one president of this country lose his life whilst on the seat of the presidency. With all respect and honor to J.E.A. Mills. And we all remember how the country came to a standstill. How tears rolled down the eyes of innocent folks and the citizenry. I also remember my brother, my sister. How Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown. Albeit, I was not alive at that time. I was not even born. Today, my brother, my sister, it is so painful, so hurtful, that the taxpayer's money is being tossed around like in a game of chess. My brother, my sister, it is so sad to look at the taxpayer's money crumble like a castle of paper. My brother, my sister, it is so sad to sit back and see how the sweat-laden tax money crumbles like a castle of cards. My brother, my sister, Mr. President does not pay a penny when he flies out of this country. You pay and I pay. All the Italian food, all the Spanish delicacies he eats and gorges himself on, we pay. What kind of a president is this who says he's our servant? Yet he eats better than the master. What kind of a president is this who says he's our humble servant? Yet is more arrogant than the master and would not listen to the master. My brother and my sister, Ghanaians have to again force themselves to come to terms with another sleeping episode of a president. And the sad thing is that he would wake up whilst people are clapping and also clap. What are you clapping for? People have heard something that has made them clap. Now they are clapping as woken you up and you also join in the clapping. What are you clapping for? You are making a mockery of yourself. That is why we have to avoid all these ego bloated homo sapiens. That is why we have to kick out all these ego bloated politicians who claim they are our humble servants yet they are so egotistical. Can I go further? My brother, my sister, the president is in Glasgow and that is supposed to be the capital of Scotland. My brother, my sister, and he's made a speech. It's a whole lengthy speech. I'm going to take only two paragraphs and we'll base our discourse on that. He started, Climate change is the greatest threat to the realization of sustainable development goals. It has an enormous impact on the fundamentals required for our survival on earth, which is why we have converged in Glasgow. Even though we in Africa are the least of the contributors to the phenomenon responsible for less than 4% of the global volume of carbon emissions, we suffer the most because our agrarian and resource-driven economies are particularly susceptible to the effects of climate change. And our capacity to withstand its shocks is weak. Agriculture, water, energy and the extraction of mineral resources are essential drivers of development in our countries but at the same time are characteristically sensitive to changing climate the african development bank has stated that the continent would need about three trillion in mitigation and adaptation by 2030 to enable us to implement our nationally determined contributions the obvious question arises as to how do we in africa finance these commitments especially as our social economic development uh, continues unfortunately to be low you see Nobody takes this president serious when he reads from a script. It's either plagiarized or it has no iota of weight. 
I intentionally use the word wait so a lot of you won't understand and say that I'm being disrespectful. My brother, my sister, I am saying that a lot of people do not take this president serious. Anytime he pulls out a piece of paper, in fact, his only ammunition is a written speech for him. A speech that he has no time to look at until he hears people clapping and he claps. Then they mention his name to come and deliver his speech. The speech does not represent the people of Ghana. The speech does not even represent the president. The speech represents the ghost writers who are busily plagiarizing other people's speeches. What sense does it make what I just read? Did you understand it? We in Africa contribute to global warming, right? About 4%. That's what he said. Climate change. 4%. But we suffer a lot because our economies do not produce enough. Our economies produce so low. In other words, we are so dependent on those who are actually the main drivers of climate change. True or false? Did I speak like the president? Because I want to be as simple as possible. My brother, my sister, Mr. President says that we in Africa are only responsible for about 4% of climate change, of which global warming is part. My brother, my sister, and then he goes ahead to say, but those who even contribute humongously to climate change, as they suffer it, we suffer it even the more. Because our economies are so dependent on them. Hallelujah. Africa without aid. Ghana without aid. Are you not tired of always tying your loins to those who destroy the earth? Are you not tired of tagging along with the people who always give you crumbs and never invite you to the dining table? I'm speaking in parables. My brother, my sister, this speech that Mr. President just read, for all you know, some Eugene Ayn or some Kwame Mensa was taxed to write this nonsense and he wrote it and gave it over to mr president and he never took time to even look through it and he's gone there fast asleep when it's time for him to speak he comes and rolls it out and then he reads it ditto ditto ask him two questions from what he's reading he will beat about the bush over and over, get arrogant, and then spoil everything up. May we never have a president like this again. May we never have a president arrogant like this before. And again, my brother, my sister, the conference is all about climate change. And we in Ghana, my brother, my sister, at least have done quite well when it comes to this climate change. Mr. President said it is the greatest threat to the realization of sustainable development goals. But for us in Ghana, climate change is not the greatest threat to the realization of sustainable development goals. What is the greatest threat is a sleeping president. Our biggest threat in this country is not climate change. How many industries do we have around? With press ex president Kufo sitting down there and talking about Kwame Nkrumah rushing to industrialize this country. What causes climatic change or climate change? Emissions from our factories and so on and so forth, as the president mentioned in his speech. Carbon emissions. In fact, Ghana would be one of the least, a small country like Ghana. How many industries do we have? How many factories do we have? Our biggest threat is not climate change. Our biggest threat is bad leadership. Our biggest threat, bigger, 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 biggest threat is corruption. Mr. President, 
should be invited to conferences of corruption, not climate change. We don't have a problem with climate change in this country. The problem we have is a problem of leadership and corruption. How many people agree? How many people agree? We can always give a lesson in climate change because we've been able to deal with that very well in this country, at least. And around Africa, our biggest problem is corruption. Our biggest problem is a problem of leadership. I leave it here. I'm going to tackle the next thing, and from the president, we are going to the vice president. The comedian vice president, Baomia, who would only build roads and fix street lights after a family member has died, unfortunately. Such leaders. Well, I'm reading this, my brother, my sister, from City Newsroom. And this one was written by Jonas Nyabo. Written and published on the 21st of October, 2021. It says, NDC is only good at propaganda. We have facts and data. I know a lot of you are laughing. That is how lowly my brother Baumia has descended. The fine gentleman that we knew, very eloquent, so respected, has descended so low to the point that any weed, I hope you understand it when I say weed, on one third plan can slap his cringing brows. I'm speaking in parables yet again. He says, NDC is only good at propaganda. We have facts and data. I read from City Newsroom. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Bahomia, has taken a job at the Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, saying the party is only good at churning out propaganda and arguing without facts. While speaking at the closing ceremony of a three-day orientation program for newly appointed metropolitan, municipal, and district chief executives, MMDCs in Accra, Dr. Baumia said the new patriotic party government has enough facts and data to back its claims of significant development in the country. He speaks like that with passion. And then his sleeping boss, Sleepy Ado, will go back and negate everything this guy says. And the people of Cape Coast will go so angry and mad only for them to run around with their tails between their legs, the two cartoon characters, run back and say, oh, we are sorry, we were sleeping at the time that we made that promise to you. And when another well-meaning chief says, listen, there's a building here which is almost complete. 90% complete. Please, instead of spending so much money to exquisitely fly out of this country, morose yourself into what is known as largesse when the people are suffering. Please. So spend just one trip. One sleepy trip. One trip to go and sleep and use that money to finish this building. You got angry. And arrogantly asked the chief to go and fix the place himself. My brother, my sister, up till now, no apology has been given to the chief. How do you expect an arrogant sleeping president to apologize? Yeah, they eat and drink apologies night and day. The least thing you do, they want you to apologize. Yet where it matters most, you will never find them. In fact, if hell, if hell was in a private jet, Nana Ado would be Satan. You want to hear it again? I know. If hell was a private jet with two showers, Nana Ado would be Satan. In fact, if the hell we are all talking about, the hell that has been talked about by Muslims, Christians, and the rest, was a private jet. Nana Ado will be the CEO of that hell. 
And the CEO of hell is Satan. His Christian name is Macarius. Lucifer Macarius. Hear me now, Bridget. Comedian Vice President Mr. Bean, a.k.a. Political Hush Puppy, my brother, my sister, is saying that he speaks with facts. They have data to show how much work they have done. But the NDC speaks without facts. The NDC speaks without data. My brother, my sister, the NDC under Mahama did so many terrible things. We hated them and kicked them out. We called them all sorts of names. All you need to do, you don't need to believe me. Just rewind and go to the days of Mahama. Play back my recordings. Play back Black Rasta on radio. And nobody needs to convince you that we lit the fire. My brother, Ghana first. And nobody can take that from us. It doesn't matter who is in power. It doesn't matter whether your head looks like Dawa Dawa or your mustache looks like that of Mr. Bean. It doesn't matter whether guinea fowls are flying to Burkina Faso or Togo. And it doesn't matter whether Abobo Ya will continue to be on the street or would grow wings and fly to India. It doesn't matter whether you put up a sugar factory that never made one grain of sugar or you promised 101 uh, hospitals in what was ridiculously known as Agenda 111. Or is it 419? The most important thing is that we remain focused and nobody can move us. Our feet and our roots are rooted deep into the ground of Ghana. Understand? No, my brother, my sister. We all saw how Mahama misbehaved with our economy. And we kicked Mahama out. And believe that one man had been struggling to be president. And he begged us for an opportunity to make Ghana proud again. Little did we know that he was looking for an opportunity to replicate, better still duplicate, what his father did abysmally years back. And we gave Nana Ado our trump card. Our trump card has now become a castle of cards crumpling before our very eyes. My brother, my, my sister, Yetisi Kaso and Nayebre. Still, Yetisasi Kanoso, Yetisasi Kakokonoso, Na ye wu first on the yebre. He said the ye wu. Baumia is talking about the fact that yes, they have all the data, they have all the facts. In fact, you had all the data and the facts. Yet you went to promise the people of Cape Coast. Whatever you promise them, an airport, my brother, my sister, and a what? A harbor. Without facts and data, with all your facts and data, with all your doctorate degrees, with all your law degrees, you felt it was most important to build a harbor in Cape Coast, to build an airport in Cape Coast. A year or two after that infamous promise, you went back like morose human beings and stood there and told them that, oh, uh, there's no need for an airport. Uh, I beg your pardon, there's no need for a harbor in Cape Coast. Because there's a harbor right there in Elmina, which is just a stone's throw away from Cape Coast. Did you not know that at the time that you gathered your data and all your facts, this guy is a comedian. Baumia is the biggest political comedian I've seen. And I don't like him one bit when it comes to things like this. He doesn't know how to decently carry his information across. People believed him when he spoke. But now, my brother, my sister, he's one of the people drawing Ghana backwards with lies. They have used him as a stooge to go and cover up their dirty work. Now they have finished using him and they cannot wait to kick him back to Wale Wale. The best he can do right now is to fix the street lights 
in Wale, Wale, Gambaga, and all those places, so that in retirement, at least he would have light and water. I'm speaking in parables. They do not even see him as a bona fide member of the party. They see him as an alien. And they are still asking themselves how he found his way, better still, how he slitted his way, how he serpentinely maneuvered his way through the maze into the party. Hallelujah. Somebody won't get it. Hear me now, brethren. Now this guy is sitting down there whilst people are also having their meetings and blaming who, 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 and who for bringing him in. They have started labeling him as the lying economist. And Alan is the truthful economist. Hallelujah. Who turned Baumia into a liar? It is your own party. It is the same sleepy president, sleepy Ado. My brother, my sister, better still sleepy down. Kwa. Hey, hear me now, my brother, my sister. With all the facts, with all the data, they are still leading us astray. What is a data? What is that data? What is that fact? To the man who can find food, a man who can find kinky, a man who goes out and realizes that the prices of kinky have skyrocketed, hallelujah, a mason who will go and buy a box of nails and the next day he goes there, the price has increased. Oh, hallelujah. Even prostitutes are increasing the price of their something. What kind of a country is this? If you want to see the quality of a country, forget about the infrastructure and so on and so forth. Look at the human resource. What does Black Rasta mean by that? How do the people argue? Right now on social media, the best way the youth can argue a fact is through insults. Because they learned that from dirty politicians who are paid to talk and insult rather than to use their brain. May I repeat it? I'm saying that the best way to size up a country and the best way to assess the quality of a country, forget about the infrastructure. Look at the human resource. The human beings living it. Look, there would never be a country without human beings. Any country without human beings is nothing but a jungle. Hear me? So the human beings are those that form the country and not the buildings. You hear me? The buildings are secondary to the human resource. This is too deep for some people to understand. But you would understand. The same way some pastors will tell you the church is not a building. The church is the people. Hallelujah. Hear me now. Hey. Now my brother, my sister. When you look at Ghana, you will realize that we are so low. You know what it is? The youth. The best way for any civil discourse is by way of insults. Check out what happens on social media in Ghana. You go right, oh, good morning. And the next thing you see is, what is good about the morning, foolish man? Oh, how about that? Oh, God bless everybody reading this one. We God. Me a day here, they suffer. I say, God, a boa basa. True or false? You think that this is the caliber of people that can make a nation? A nation of idiots? A nation of fools? A nation of people who don't understand what it is to say civil discourse. Do you get it? My brother, my sister, I hate making these examples. Go to America, go to England, go to Japan, go to China, go to all those places, and then have some time to look at how they interact in terms of their human resource. Take social media, China. Look at how they interact. They argue intellectually. It doesn't matter your educational standard. They argue with sense. I don't agree with this thing that you said because of A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. But here, no. It's all about insults. And we think that that is democracy. It tells what kind of caliber, what fiber you are made from. 
In fact, you better live in the jungle. That is where in soul strive. The fittest would survive. My brother, my sister, is caused by politicians. When on your radio and TV, all you see is some idiot from a village that they brought that this is the communications director. His nose is like a grinding stone from the 20th century. My brother, my sister, sitting on radio and TV, the shirt that he's wearing is like a corpse's shirt. A shirt that has been removed from a corpse and put on him. Give him three weeks, he will wear a suit. Ha! Give him another one week, his shoe will be most expensive. Give him another two weeks, he's built a house. And you wonder, because of village insults, they pay you to talk rather than to think. So you sitting down there trying to make a meaning out of the stupidity that is being peddled on radio and TV. You are wondering what the heck is happening here. You will remain in poverty until Jesus Christ comes for the fifth time. You will still be poor. But idiots from the village who came in corpses, shirts, and trousers, sitting for the first time, you look at them, you say, hey, what is this? They open their mouth and it's all garbage. They clap for them. They say, hey, we're not Oh, president, when he meets the president, hey, and then meet you. When we now because you are you now. Then village asshole will open his mouth and all he says, say, oh, mudi esano, I was say yo mo. Ah, you ma pa yeah yeah you know. Say hey, mumma no care why sleeping president with the eyes like those of an uh, 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 an owl that just dropped from mass. My brother, my sister, let's watch it. We can have a civil discourse devoid of all the big fat insults. We can have a civil discourse. My brother, my sister, and when you look at a country that argues intellectually, that is the country that has a future. Not a country where common good morning is followed by insults. A country where you can't see an old man on the street and say, oh, how are you, sir? No, sir. It's an insult. In our country, no young man has the right to ask an old man, how are you? The old man, even if he's on his deathbed, should be the one to ask you, running on the sporting field, how are you? He's the one dying. Yet he's the one who would ask you, a well-able-bodied man, how are you? Say, I am fine. You dare not ask him, how are you too? No, sir. It sounds like comedy, but that is the truth. So Baumia says they have all the facts. They have all the data. Keep the data for yourself. When you go to Wale Wale, bury them, grow them into fact trees and then data trees. Be fed up with these guys. And Mahama, this is a warning to you. If God gives you the opportunity to be president again, which I don't doubt, up till now, I'm wondering how he did not win the last elections. Your guess is as good as mine. Keep it. My brother, my sister, when you return to the presidency, remember posterity, legacy. You are not going to be judged by how many houses you build for yourself, how many family members you bring into the presidency, you are going to be judged but how you served Ghana. Hallelujah. Ghana first. Open your eyes. Fight corruption tooth and nail. Right from the treble. Go down to the base. Make sure that it works. Listen attentively. Nkrumah is held around the globe today. Not because he built umpteen number of houses for himself. Even coat, suit, tie that Nkrumah had, they all were embossed with property of Ghana. Even pens that Nkrumah used, embossed property of Ghana. Shoes that Nkrumah wore, property of Ghana. The day Nkrumah was overthrown, he was wearing a, 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 a suit that had property of Ghana written on it. The pen he was using was property of Ghana. Today, the Eugenians, former 
pampas sellers, former baby food hawkers, charter house and the rest. Their wives can come and tell us that they have waterfront houses, a fleet of cars. Hallelujah to the bongo clippings. Oh, people have eyes yet they can't see. My brother, my sister, yesterday I was reading the story of uh, the guy called Panel Sweet P. Whitaker. How many of you remember him? He fought with Azuma in the days, I think somewhere 1990. Sweet P. Whitaker. He was one of the smartest boxers. My brother, my sister, you know what happened to him? He made a lot of money in the days of boxing. He bought a house and put his mother into it. My brother, my sister, he started using drugs. And then his strength started going away. Even at 37, he had to retire from boxing. You know why? Because the drugs weighed on him heavily. You know how he died? Before he died, the house he gave to his mother, he removed the mother from it and sold the house for his high. He was crossing the road and a truck hit him and killed him like a fowl on the road. People don't remember how many houses he bought. They don't remember how many trucks he had. They don't remember how fat his bank account was. My brother, my sister, all they remember him for was the fact that he was in the boxing ring fighting. And that he evicted his own mother from a house he bought for him and sold the house. Legacies are very important, brethren. What are you going to leave for the people? A legacy of a flying jet with two showers? A legacy of failed promises? A legacy of sword cutting? A legacy of sleeping? A legacy of corruption? A legacy of arrogance? What legacy are you leaving for the people? My brother, my sister, I keep saying it. It's not about how many houses you build. It's not about telling people they are poor and you are rich. How many people have you been able to touch with your riches? Because I have seen a great man before called Panel Whitaker. Who built all the wonderful houses. By the time he died, he sold everything. Including the house he bought for his mother. And used it for his eye. You are not far from doing that. Today when you see the houses springing up. Remember that that is not a legacy. What is a legacy, my brother, my sister? Is what you use your riches to do for the people. That's what I keep preaching to the people. Night and day. The world is a fleeting illusion. It's not how many houses you build today. We all honor Kwame Nkrumah. Show me one house that Nkrumah built for himself. Show me one car that Nkrumah was riding around on Escalade or whatever, or Barracuda or whatever. Show me. But today, he is the most decorated politician in Africa. He lived a life that was full of legacy. He lived an honest life. He lived a life that was beyond normal. But today, we have all run away from that life of legacy. We are all thinking about how much we can steal whilst we are strong. So that when we retire, we can live on stolen wealth as our legacy. It's a failed nation that thinks like that. How would the nation grow when there are thieves all over the place? Everybody is busy stealing. So that when they retire, they can sleep on their stolen wealth. When other nations are thinking about their nation first, they are building strong foundations for the next generation to come and continue. They will continue prospering. They will continue becoming luxurious. They will continue becoming flamboyant. Whilst you continue wailing night and day, you will wither like the grass. Think about it, brethren. So when I see people flaunt their wealth, and they are this, they are this, then you ask yourself, how many people have they helped with this? All they know to do is to boast about how many houses they have, what they have and what they don't have, and all that, and they think that is an achievement. Oh, what that same thing. My brother, and this is the life of the dirty politician. And the white man taught the politician this dirty life. Because when the dirty white man came into this country, what did he do? 
He came in with a life of stealing. Steal, rape, and visit people with horror. He carried all the wealth away. My brother, my sister, and taught our people that, yes, stealing is good. After all, the man who brought us Jesus Christ himself is the mega thief. So we started building mega churches for thievery. We started building mega, 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 mega outfits where we can hoard our stolen wealth. Think about it, brethren. We are not joking. Hi, until you build a nation of generational thinkers. When you are thinking generationally, you are not thinking about stolen wealth. You are thinking about leaving a foundation that can be built on by the next generation. Now, brother, if we were all supposed to contribute blocks and build a building, and everybody comes to steal one block each, how would the foundation be built? That is the sense I'm trying to put before you. If everybody comes to pick a block, seven billion blocks to build a mega, 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 mega structure, everybody comes to steal a block. How would that mega structure be built? By abracadabra or by kanjori, by magic, by spells, right? After all, it's a country that believes in divination and believes in spirits. Spirits are better than your fathers and mothers. You worship spirits. Your fathers and mothers are in the houses eating kobe. Even the kobe is a blessing. They eat kenke with nothing. And you are there following spirits in the bush that you are looking for some God who would come down and make you rich. What a country. Think about it, brethren. Think about it. Why should a country have so many liars? Everybody's lying. President is lying. Vice president is lying. Huh? He's cutting sword all over the place. And he's not even ashamed. Cutting sword, destroying houses that he says he's going to build two years down the line, not even a brick. And he comes with one, one, one agenda. Are we kindergarten children? Where are these people taking us to? We need to speak so passionately against this so that we have a better country. That's it. You could call it a rant, you can call it harshness, noise, whatever it is. Those who see it as music will open their ears and embrace it. Those who have eyes will see. Those who have ears will hear. i leave it here. I'm going to look at the next thing right now. And this one, hmm, it's just about some of these things that we've been talking about. I'm reading this from a, a graphic. Graphic online is the national communicator. And it says, Ghana concerned about heightened sell-off of its bonds. Bond. You know what a bond is? And this is coming from Charles Edubwain. Is he the son of Edubwain? I don't know. Ghana concerned about heightened sell-off of its bonds. My brother, what bonds are we talking about? We are talking about sovereign bonds. What are sovereign bonds? Listen attentively. A sovereign bond is a specific debt instrument issued by the government. They can be denominated in both foreign and domestic currency, just like other bonds. These also promise to pay the buyer a certain amount of interest for a stipulated number of years and repay the face value in maturity. Loan. All this big English is loan. That's a sovereign bond. Charles Edubwain is a minister of state in this government. And what is he saying? Hear what he's saying. He says, Ghana concerned about heightened sell-off of its bonds. Me and you would not understand this. But when we take our time, we will get to understand. All the guy is talking about is that Ghana is borrowing too much, promising to pay, using its sovereign bonds. Something that will show that, oh, I will pay. Then they will pay interest. A lot of interest. And when the time comes, they will still pay the first value in maturity. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some boy will not understand this until he smokes in Tampi tonight. Let me read. Hear this. Listen. I've never heard this kind of minister's name. Hear what his designation is. 
the minister of state at the ministry of finance mr charles edubuahin so what minister is this he is not the minister of finance he is not the minister of energy it says that he is the minister of state at the ministry of finance so there's a minister of finance and under the ministry of finance there are other ministers of state hallelujah 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 so i read the minister of state at the ministry of finance mr charles edubohim says the government is concerned about the heightened sell-off of the uh, ghana sovereign bonds in the global market he said although the situation was a global phenomenon ghana's case was more pronounced jesus christ i leave it mechanic if this was going to be said on peace fm or doom fm that's what they will say. My brother, this is a minister of state under Nana Akufuado. And he is in the Ministry of Finance. They say when a crocodile comes out of water and tells you that, hey, the mad fish, when he's sleeping, it fasts. Psh, psh, psh. Believe it. He's saying that it is a global phenomenon. In other words, it's done globally. Other people are also borrowing. That's all they mean by sovereign bonds. They are selling that. But Ghana's own, according to him, is more pronounced. We have borrowed and borrowed and borrowed. Right now, our middle name is Borowa. Wherever we go, white people are running away from us because we are coming to borrow. We are the only people who fly private jets to go and borrow. We are the only people who fly private jets to go and borrow from bicycle riders. We are the only people who go to borrow and import food from war-torn countries. We are the only people who have no respect for our people. Building the human resource in this country is a farce. Better still, it's a fad. It's a fleeting illusion. My brother, my sister, better still, it's a whirlwind in a mirage. Hallelujah. Jesus have mercy. Listen. They are borrowing. Baumia says they have facts, they have data. Give me the facts and the data about your borrowing. Did you not say that it's only foolish countries that borrow? And that when you come, you are not going to borrow anything. And that you are going to produce, you will use production, speaking big English, and he's always shaking his, 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 his chest. Today, look at you. You have become the political hash puppy of this party. You have become the, 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 the most comic politician in their party. They see you as a persona non grata. Nobody is ready to look at you. They have used you. They have sucked all your blood. You are now anemic. They are watching you, and it hurts me. Because when you came, we supported you. We loved you, but you became a political liar. Political liar. Political hush puppy. Here you are. They say we are borrowing, we know. And the Ministry of Finance is crying. Look, this one was published when? Check it out. This one was published today. Today, 2nd November. At 11.55. And written by one Maxwell Akalari Adombela. Only a name like this can write this story. My God have mercy. Maxwell Akalari Adombela. This should be from the Upper East. See? 
sovereign bonds. We will pay. Look at this thing that we have and give us that as a certain form of collateral. We shall pay interest, high interest rates. And when maturity comes, we'll pay you the face value of whatever we are borrowing. And the Ministry of Finance says that it's becoming too much. Oh. It's becoming too much. Hey. I'll be surprised if this man is not fired. When Nana Ado returns from his sleeping journey, he will call him and say, you, you are the only one who knows economics. Eh? Go, go home and sleep. I pray that they, they keep him there so that he'll keep telling us more. I leave it here. Ah, I'm going to look at the last thing and I'm done. I have only about five minutes to go and it's enough to deal with this. I'm reading this from Peace FM Online and this one was published today, the 2nd of November, 2021. He says, we've not forgotten Mohammed's abysmal performance. And this is attributed to a lady called Mami Yabwaji. Mami Yawa, who is she? Do you know her? Look at the photo of the president, fast asleep. Bring, bring that photograph on. Fast, fast asleep. Yes, look at him. And everybody is awake. Oh. Everybody is awake. Look at the man on his left. I'm sure he's been so disturbed by the snoring of the president. And look, the guy is wearing a face mask. Because probably, well, I don't want to go that far. Leave it there. My brother, my sister, check it. Fast asleep. Wada. My fancy people say wada. Or some die. I read. We've not forgotten Mohammed's abysmal performance. Mami Yabwaji. And I read, Deputy Communications Director of the NPP, Mami Yabwaji, has appealed to Ghanaians to be vigilant during the 2024 elections. According to her, there are people who will come in sheep clothing to deceive many only to amass wealth for themselves and not for the interest of the populace. She also reminds Ghanaians not to forget the abysmal performance of former President John Mahama, who is running around making promises. Mahama has lost credibility due to his abysmal performance and incompetence. It will be a major mistake on our part as Ghanaians to forget his abysmal and incompetent performance and vote him back. She wondered what new vision he, Mr. Mahama, was seeking to implement. Her name is Mamiya Abwaje. Yes, we remember the abysmal performance of Mahama. In fact, we also remember the incompetence of Mahama. But as it stands right now, the incompetence and the abysmal performance of Mahama will be better than a sleeping president. Mahama was abysmal, incompetent. All those words. But his incompetence is better than the competence of your sleeping president. His abysmal performance is better than your family and friends wealth gathering and amassing party. Who doesn't agree with me? My brother, my sister is terrible. These are the people who talk because they have to talk. There are some people they have been put there to talk. So whether they have anything sensible to say or not, they say, we voted Mahama out because he was incompetent, because he was abysmal, because he was lousy, because he was whatever. But today, sometimes, there are kind people who always have beautiful proverbs. You see, a boa sutra mienua who can for back on. If they slap you twice, you would praise one. Imagine they ask two people to come and slap you. Or one person. Give him two slaps. Pa, pa. When he goes to talk, you say, ah, the second slap that he gave me almost broke my jaw. The first one was better. A lie? So there can people say, you boy has to throw me a Who can fall back on? Now, I should throw me a no-no. I come in, 
me kanfo ma hama so tro no ni nyina ya ni nyina ya bismal ni incompetent no na ba ko no de na ye ni namu ye ni namu o misi ye ni namu o rade ye ni namu o i say de ye wu in Muhammad's days, we're walking hungry. Now we are dead and buried. Many more are dying. They are borrowing in the name of COVID-19. Then they come back and tell us we are over borrowing. Hallelujah. My name is Black Rasta. I want to say thank you for listening. I appreciate you. I love you. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. We normally don't like to criticize, but if we must criticize, we only would criticize to build and not to destroy. Bye. Up, up, the mighty race.